I cannot learn by reading complicated textbooks and academic papers. I just can't do it. And yet I made it into an MIT PhD program. If you're struggling to learn and understand by reading complicated textbooks and academic papers, this video is for you. If I'm bad at the very thing that I'm trying to explain, why am I even making this video? You see, you may have watched my previous videos including how to understand math and physics intuitively as well as problem solving strategies. And I'm quite happy with how these videos turned out. However, these are all things that I'm extremely good at and have been very good at since high school. I won lots of national and international physics, math and science olympiads. Therefore, people were naturally drawn to watching these videos coming from me. There's just one big problem with listening to advice coming from people who are extremely good at something. Because people who are very good and talented for something oftentimes didn't have to go through the same learning process trying to understand the thing that they're talented for. This is not to say that if you're struggling with something that you can't learn that thing, you absolutely can. However, the most optimal way for you to learn this may just be slightly different. And therefore, sometimes the very best teachers are those who had to struggle to learn the very same thing they're teaching. It sounded very quotable. Can we put it up here? There we go. Wise words. When it comes to reading and understanding complicated literature, I really struggled. And part of this may be due to the fact that I've always been struggling with ADHD, but most of it is likely due to the fact that reading is just not my brain's preferred method of absorbing information. I'm much better at learning by doing, aka kinesthetic learning, as well as audiovisual learning. My number one tip, if you're like me and you're struggling to understand complex written information, is to avoid it as much as possible. And I know this sounds like a silly piece of advice and later in this video I'm gonna talk about actual tips on how to read and understand text, but think about it for a moment. It's 2024. The internet is full of information in every shape and form. Why would you torture yourself to written text if you're struggling with this if there are way better alternatives out there for you? Work smart, not hard. Obviously, you won't always be able to completely avoid having to learn while reading. That's what this video is for. However, oftentimes you will be. And look at how far in life I managed to get while avoiding having to read complicated books and academic papers as much as possible. The very first time I really couldn't avoid having to learn by reading was during my PhD at MIT. You see, once you're at the very cutting edge of research, there are just no online courses or colleagues that can help you guide you through the process. It's all on you. Back in college, I had to learn quantum mechanics and my professor was using this terrible textbook that I recommend you to avoid like the plague. And since his lectures were so bad that nobody really understood anything, I had to go through this textbook for many weeks at a time trying to learn and teach myself quantum mechanics. It was a complete nightmare and I didn't make any progress. Whew, I feel like I'm getting childhood traumas just by thinking about this. Anyway, luckily I was smart enough to realize that this was completely pointless and I gave up. Instead, I got myself another book that was much more well-written and actually used at MIT. I wasn't at MIT, by the way, at that time. And therefore, I could at least understand the basics. However, I was still kind of slow. And therefore, I had this great idea that I would just get together with my friends and we would go through these books together, trying to understand these things and derivations by ourselves and then explain them to each other. It was really much more efficient. And just like that, studying had shifted from pure learning by reading to a mix of all four. And I really flourished in this environment and did extremely well in the final exams. And at other times, I was able to find some online courses that would teach me all of this in an interactive way. In this video, I'm going to face my biggest fear. Okay, that was a bit of an overstatement, but I'm going to face a fear of mine. Let's just put it like that. I was asked to peer review an academic paper. It's a paper in quantum computing, and don't worry, you don't have to understand anything about quantum computing to follow the rest of this video. The way peer review works is that once a manuscript has been submitted to a journal for review, the editors of this journal contact several other scientists who have also published papers in the same field to provide anonymous feedback. And based on this feedback, the manuscript is either accepted and published, sent back for some revisions and further edits, or just outright rejected. With that, let's dive right into it. To make this experience as authentic as possible, I'm looking at this paper myself for the very first time. I don't actually know what it's about. So let's try this out. Now, since it's 2024, I will actually use some more fancy generative AI, chatgpt like methods later. But to really get us started in the most traditional way, I will read this paper and take notes on my iPad 
kind of the way I would do it if it were a couple of years ago, because I still think this is super important. We'll also try a platform called Unriddle.ai, who kindly agreed to sponsor this video, who help you read and understand and also write scientific papers, but more about that later. So the paper is called Enhancing the Performance and Stability in D-Wave Systems Using Quantum-Inspired Generative Adversarial Networks, QI GANs. I will really need my emotional support plant over here. All right, so to look into this, the title should already tell you a lot, but the really important part, and also something I look in papers for being good, it needs to have a good abstract that kind of explains what this all is about. So what I would do is I would read this abstract, try to roughly get what the idea is of the paper. A good abstract needs to tell you most of it. I would maybe look at the introduction a little bit. I think introductions are quite important. They just you know get you on the same page in case you're not fully familiar with everything that's going on. Although this sounds so complicated, that it might be a little bit uh, harder to understand. Just to give you a little glimpse into what this actually is, and later with the AI tool, we're gonna to try to understand this in a much more simpler way, because unless you're working in quantum computing research, there's no way to deep, have like deep understanding of this, which is fine, by the way. I'm struggling with it too. Then the next thing I would do is I would look at all the figures, because usually based on the title, abstract introduction and figure, you should be able to get kind of 60% off what a paper is about. And oftentimes that's even enough for understanding a paper if you're good at it. So there will be some literature survey. We don't really care about that unless you kind of want to learn more about it, but usually a scientific paper isn't a thing to look at. What's much more important is uh, to look at the diagrams over here, such as this one. So let's try to look into this. Um, there's some interesting stuff going on. Performance and stability in the D-Wave system. So D-Wave is a company that produces some kind of quantum computers or quantum annealers. They're not real quantum computers. So they're actually building physical hardware and have been for over a decade or so. And always the problem with quantum computers of any sort is that they're very unstable. In theory, they could do crazy magic for you, but in practice, they're focused on like bit level or quantum bit, qubit we call it, level interactions where the smallest noise or you know, radiation or pretty much anything kind of temperature that's non-zero can interfere with it and destroy it. And therefore the focus probably of this paper is to use some kind of generative AI to, to help this become more stable. At least that's my guess based on the title. title. The next thing I would look at is um, just kind of, the, okay, the framework. So how does, how does the D-Wave system actually work? I think this is like something I would try to skim over. I would make some highlights. And then obviously the formulas are the really hard part. Sometimes you don't need to understand the formulas in great detail, but um, let's just look into this. So total variation, cool back Leibler divergence. Um, I've heard it at some point, I bet I mentioned it in some of my own papers at some point too. This stuff is not that easy to understand, so I'm not gonna bother with you with it too much. Um, quantum mealing process, the algorithms. Okay, this is kind of stuff that you would look into. Um, Again, it's not something that I expect you to understand anyway. Now, the algorithm is something that's quite interesting. Um, algorithms, you know, pictures say a thousand words, algorithms say 10,000 words. If you have some kind of basic idea of what is happening, you know, they give you kind of an algorithm that will help you get a glimpse of what they're actually trying to get at without all the long text. So this is definitely something I would, I would analyze in more detail and just try to understand what this is actually doing in kind of pseudocode as we call it. And there should be a conclusion, research conclusion. All right, this is something that you definitely want to re read. Even if you just skim over the paper, in a scientific literature, you should always look at the conclusion. Now, what you notice here is I did not read the paper from the beginning to the end. And I think, unless you're some kind of genius who can just read a paper, understand it, and I have such a guy in my pre previous group at MIT, he can actually just look at any paper and understand it. I do not possess the intellectual capacity to do that, I think it's a bad idea to do it. So instead, you should really do the skipping around. Looking at the stuff that matters, trying to you know, look at abstract figures, conclusion, and just get a rough idea of what is going on. Why should you do that? Because once you have a rough understanding of what is going on, it is so much easier to read with that context. Because if you just start reading without that context, you have to comprehend while you're reading a very long text. And if you're just, just like me and having a hard time doing that, it will not really go well for you. Therefore, that's the main thing to do. The references, 
they're not that important for you in this context. So I, as a reviewer of this paper, will have to actually dig into all the references and make sure that they're fine, which I'm not gonna do live in this video. That's probably gonna take me a day or two of just researching. But that's kind of the high level approach of how I would do this. Um, and don't force yourself to actually read full papers if you don't have to. Sometimes, based on the abstract, you can already conclude that this is not a paper for you and you don't even spend time reading it. You should look at these abstracts and decide what you actually want to read. And based on that, you can make a plan of you know, multiple papers. This one I want to understand in great detail. This one I want to just skim through it just like I did right now, maybe in a bit more detail. And these ones I can completely ignore because they're not actually going to help me. That's the old school way of doing it before I would read the paper. Now we're going to do this in a more fun way. So normally I would just copy paste portions of this paper into ChatGPT and then ask ChatGPT questions about it. That can work well, but as you saw, there are algorithms in here, some graphs and figures. That kind of stuff is not easy to copy paste into ChatGPT. This is where the sponsor of this video comes in. I'm gonna try the tool for the very first time live as well, just to give you the authentic experience of seeing it for the first time. Let's do that. All right, now that you're done with the manual part of the job, I upgraded to my the laptop over here. Let me try to do this using ChatGPT and Unriddle.ai because I'm really curious how much easier reading this paper is gonna be to me. So the old school way, as I said, as I would do this is I would just select all, it's kind of annoying. I would copy paste all that stuff into, well, ChatGPT directly and then I would just ask questions about it. Won't really work well because of the formulas. If it weren't for formulas, I would actually love to try ChatGPT for this because they have the new GPT-401 preview that may be pretty good. But let's look at Unriddle.ai because I'm actually much more excited about this. So this is how their platform looks like. They have a few preloaded things in here. And over here, we can already see the actual paper that I just uploaded. It took just a few seconds to process actually, so that was pretty efficient. And now the next thing I would do is I would try to get rid of this taskbar, there we go. I can actually ask for this to summarize in a very easy way. Now, if you're the average viewer and you're not an expert in quantum computing, I'm just gonna ask something like, Summarize this so that the average first year college student can understand this paper. Naturally, this takes a little bit of time to actually generate. There we go. This paper is discussed the use of quantum inspired generative adversarial networks. Yada, yada, yada. Okay, this is a lot more easy to understand. Now, again, this is very complicated stuff. So even if you summarize it for a six year old to understand, you will not actually be able to grasp the depths of this paper. That is totally fine. This was created using Cloud 3.5 Sonnet. I'm actually curious if you switch to GPT-40. It doesn't yet have GPT-401 just because it's in preview, but let's let's try to do this. Um, let me see if I can create a new chat somehow. Oh, it has notes that you can take. This is actually really nice. I'm discovering this for the first time as I'm as I'm doing this. New chat, there we go. So I love that it has these citations, so you can actually click on these things and it shows you exactly where it got the references from. I believe these are the page numbers. Yes, they are. Uh, oh yeah, it highlights, no, these are not the page numbers. This highlights the sections where you can try to understand and comprehend what is going on in here. I mean, that looks pretty good. And now the way I would really approach this is I would use this as kind of an oracle or a very smart person. Imagine if you were reading a paper, but you had someone, the author of the paper right next to you, and you had the luxury of asking the author questions, that's kind of how I would treat this. Instead of trying to read every single bit and piece, I would read a little bit about it and ask some questions. You can even ask more general questions such as, how does the wave work? Something like this. All right, so this wasn't necessarily even part of the, the whole paper, but it understands this because it uses, in this case, GPT-40 or Claude 3.5 Sonnet, which arguably is a bit better than GPT-40. And it can use the knowledge that it already has as a large language model on its own, even without using the paper, kind of give you a little bit of a better understanding of what is going on here. I think this is a really great trick. Now, next thing I would like to do is I'm trying to understand some details about this. I would love to understand algorithm one. Explain to me in simple terms how algorithm one works. And we're gonna try to ask Claude Sonnet about this. Oh, this really works. 
that wouldn't have worked if I had just copy pasted all of this because it would have messed up the whole thing and it wouldn't have really understood what's going on. So the algorithm starts by setting up some initial values, n, t, and m, and creating starting group. Okay, so let's um, try to understand what n, t, and m are because honestly, just by looking at this, I don't actually understand this. What are n, t, and m? Honestly, this is so much fun. I'm really trying this for the first time live now. If I had had this while I was still doing my PhD at MIT, honestly, I think I would have stuck around much longer because reading scientific papers was really such a pain in me and this makes it so much easier. I'm only gonna use this to review that paper that I just got because that's the only papers I have to deal with nowadays. But if you're still in school or even if you aren't you're trying to read some complex stuff, I really encourage you to try and riddle and check this out because it's so much fun. I have a link in the description that will allow you to get a free trial of it. And there's a free version and a paid version. Obviously with the paid version, you get more usage and stuff like that. But even the free version will allow you to get a lot of value out of it. So I encourage you to check it out. Just to summarize, the number one tip that I really encourage you to follow is don't torture yourself to reading long text if you're not really getting any value out of it. Instead, try to use so many other methods, online courses, talking to your friends and working together in groups. It's still, it has always been one of the best way to learn something. And if you don't have other people around you and you're still struggling to read, I encourage you to use AI tools. You can use ChatGPT for some simple text, or if you're dealing with some more complicated stuff, try using Unriddle or a similar tool out there and just query it and ask it questions. You will always learn so much more if you can ask your own questions and things that you don't understand to an AI to explain it to you and break it down on a different level. This will make your learning so much easier and will give you such an easier time. And I wish I would have had this many, many years ago. With that, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and turn on the notifications. With that, I'm off to the Philippines. Take care. Thanks for watching.